The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. A little bit stuffed up, folks, getting over a uh, little bit of COVID last week in my household, unfortunately. Not the only one as Omicron spreads uh, throughout this country and across the world. Thankfully, everybody doing well. Can try and make it through the hour. Uh, should be okay, but a little stuffed up. Still getting over it, uh, as you can tell from my voice, of course. But great to be back. Quite a week in the markets last week. We're going to kick it off again this week with a little bit of volatility in both directions. You have the S&Ps, negative by about seven points right now, putting it on a 15-minute chart. Remarkable. Almost can't overstate the volatility that you had on both directions every single day almost last week. You had two-way action in dramatic fashion that's your chart going back to last monday and boy you're talking about basically 150 to 200 point s p range and we finish out the week almost right at the highs you actually have a high i guess you could call it of 44 46 on wednesday last week but that's a brief high you see the spike we got up there basically closing at session uh highs for the week almost to close things out remarkable this week we kick things off negative by about six points on the s p right now at 44.16 nasdaq in positive territory there uh nasdaq the only index in the green right now up about 52 points at 14,486. you get the dow off 131 points 34,464. the russell negative by 11 right now Crude, <clears throat> quite a price tag on Friday, almost made it to an 89 handle. This morning, we're trading right now up 60 cents on the session at 87.43. Gold, quite a pullback last week following the Fed. Gold trades from 1854 down to 1780. Gold catching a little bit of a bid just even in the last half hour, spiking about 10 bucks to 1798. Gold's trading at 1796 right now. We jump over to silver up 21 cents, quite a pullback on silver as well. You're talking about almost a $2 slide, not almost a $2 slide, more than a $2 slide. If you back things up to where we were early Monday, 2425, make it down to 2215 as of Friday's action and the all important notes and bonds. We're talking about a yield right now in the tenure of 1.8%. Quite the fall off on Wednesday, man. Chairman Powell's press conference, wowzers, right? Uh, pretty revealing press conference, as we all know, on Wednesday. He sounded really confident that they're going to be able to lift off. They're going to be able to lift off in a way that they were not able to do in 2018 because of the strength of the economy. Uh, that in and of itself should be pretty revealing, folks, in terms of where he assesses the risk to this market. The Fed has two mandates maximum employment and stable prices folks maximum employment we got a 3.9 percent unemployment rate we're, i think we're all aware of the stories of the tight labor market right people quitting uh people able to demand higher wages when jumping jobs very tight labor market 3.9 percent you contrast that to the inflation numbers that we see uh no longer transitory as we're in january of 2022 now seven percent almost on the inflationary front point being Look at those two mandates, 3.9% unemployment rate and 7% inflation. You better believe that stable prices is the mandate that the Fed's worried about right now. And we got a non-farm payroll number on Friday this week. Should be an interesting number for the month of January. Expectations, about 150,000 for jobs added on Friday. Don't be surprised if the market even misses that, folks. I wouldn't be surprised if it's almost a flat number, some calling for a negative number. Uh, my family had COVID last week, right? And I'm not the only one. And, and just living through that experience, the disruption is real, folks. Uh, I had, first it starts with, you have a, a kid maybe, then you have my fiance who was positive on Wednesday. So she was self-isolating. So I had to take care of the kids, okay? So I'm taking care of the kids. She's self-isolating. Turns out we all got it. Not surprising in a household, right? So as of Thursday night, we figure that out. Then we can be together at least. Come Friday, we were kind of comfortable that we all had it at least. And there was no reason to isolate between each other. Point being... I had to be out of work on Thursday and Friday because I was watching the kids were all sick. Um, even though I wasn't sick myself, the disruption, very, very real when you have this many cases, 
folks, this many cases uh, throughout the country, the disruption to families, to businesses, et cetera. I was out of work Thursday and Friday, um, playing catch up a little bit this weekend, just with emails and stuff like that. You can't avoid the disruptions when you get that many people infected, folks. Um, so it's interesting to see how this number is going to come out Friday. But here's what I'll say about it. We get non-farm payrolls on Friday for the month of January. Even if we come in with a negative number, don't think that that is going to give some type of pause to Chairman Powell for their rate adjustments going forward. Yes, you start seeing severe weakness in this economy. That will alter their path. A low number for January with the Omicron spike basically encompassed within that month. I believe that Chairman Powell will be able to write that one off pretty quickly and maybe rightfully so. That that is not going to indicate a broad weakness in the economy. That's going to indicate um, a COVID spike that kind of blew us all out of the water here. Unfortunately, we got deaths at like 2,400 people dying every single day right now. A sad issue in a big way. Uh, that's just the humanity portion of things. But you look at the business side of things, the disruption is very real, folks. I just lived it myself. Now, here's what I'll say coming out of that as well, that I got two kids in my household under the age of five, okay? They don't have a chance to get vaccinated. Um, we've begun to live our life. Everybody else in my household is vaccinated. We've begun to live our life, right? We went to a, hosp um, a hotel, a hospital, a couple times over the last year, so it's not like we're hunkered down. But we had made the conscious decision to try and remain as safe as possible within reason, still seeing people going out um, occasionally, but not being around larger groups of people with the unvaccinated kids, hoping that we could get to the point that they get the vaccine. And we were pretty close, but didn't quite make it. Uh, Omicron had other plans, as I put in my newsletter this morning to subscribers of Rocket Equities and Options. Uh, but the goal was to try and get them vaccinated before their eventual exposure. Everybody's gonna be exposed at some point, folks. It's gonna uh, become an endemic deal that we are dealing with this forever. So I'm no fool to think we're gonna get you know rid of this thing, but the goal was to get them vaccinated hopefully before they're exposed. So that dictated a lot of our decisions in terms of being around very large groups of people. Maybe when you're talking about going, you know, to an amusement park, right? Disney, going to a big movie theater, something like that. Trying to keep the kids out of that just to keep them as safe as possible. Um, really close to being able to get that vaccine. Point being, they've now been exposed, unfortunately so, but everybody's doing well, which is the bottom line, the good deal. That going forward is going to change our behaviors. Um, if we didn't have unvaccinated kids in the house, okay, yes, you can still practice safe measures, but we would have been more comfortable ourselves being vaccinated to be around larger groups in the event. So, I mean, we watched football playoffs this weekend. My goodness, what a weekend of football uh, to go along with last weekend as well. But looking at those stadiums, just packed houses, right? We'll be tough to bring the unvaccinated kids in our household. These were personal decisions we were making, okay? But we're not the only ones making these decisions. And I imagine we're not the only ones, folks, okay? That when you get exposed to the Omicron variant, and now maybe you had kids in the household who now are gonna have some form of immunity, uh, we will be more comfortable maybe to start making decisions that we weren't quite comfortable with prior, okay? And that's gonna matter. And that's why you're seeing, I think, everybody talking about this is the last wave. Once we get over this, you're going to start seeing a return to normal, finally. Uh, how that hits travel stocks, how that hits stocks like Disney. If you listen to the program, you know I've been a bull on Disney for a while. But I tell you, folks, I was chatting even with my dad this morning, and I put it out to subscribers as well. I'm telling you, um, Disney's in the talks now. Things like that are going to become much more comfortable for people that maybe they weren't prior. So it might be a game changer, as many are talking about in this economy as we open back up. Uh, we'll be right back. We'll talk a little bit more. Everything about this. in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24 7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps down nine right now. NASDAQ in the green by 36, Dow off 143, Russell off 12. So just to finish that conversation, I'm trying to give you the, um, the, the mind frame that I'm in. And I'm not the only one, folks. You know, I said to many friends of mine, you know, if I was if I didn't have unvaccinated kids in the house, folks, my life would have been very different in the last uh, almost year now that we're talking about since the vaccines became readily available. Having two unvaccinated kids in the house has dictated a lot of our decisions when it comes to large gatherings, which is why many of the travel stocks, right? Um, and I say travel stocks, you group in there, Disney, a big one, movie theater stocks, et cetera. I'm not the only one doing this, folks. It is gonna be a game changer. I'm living it. I can tell you that with young kids, weren't quite comfortable. And listen, you're not, it's not crazy lockdowns, right? We were sending our four-year-old son to pre-K. He's there with no mask. Four-year-olds wear a mask. I don't think that makes sense in schools. You got to send him to school. He's exposed to tons of kids in school, okay? But just making choices, trying to keep them as safe as possible, maybe delaying a Disney trip, maybe delaying seeing movies, stuff like that. That's all out the window, folks, and I'm not the only one. Um, so keep that in mind as you look for some of these stocks. Travel stocks have been crushed recently. Um, I mean, Disney, let's just take a look real quick, right? Talk about a pullback. Now, last week you were down as low as 129. With the market, you rebound. Today, you're going to open basically flat, slightly in the red by about, ah, you got a bid ask spam spreading the close of Friday. Taking a look at a longer term chart of Disney, almost back to the 618 or the full run higher from COVID of 79 bucks up to 203. You trade down to 129 last week. The 618 about 126 last week, quite the pullback, quite the underperformance in 2021, but eventually that's going to turn, folks. And Disney, yeah, a big portion of their valuation is the Disney Plus streaming service, but you better believe the parks and the movie theater business, all right? In 20, uh, 2019, it's amazing I had to go back to 2019 prior to COVID. Um, 2019, I believe Disney had nine or 10 movies that all grossed over a billion dollars at the box office. All right, that world will return at some point, folks. It's gonna be slightly different with the invention of streaming and now some of those production houses dropping those titles right to streaming. But it's going to come back, and uh, I can tell you myself, it's pretty exciting. We're only an hour. We're less than an hour from Disney, folks, from where I am. And it was off the table because of COVID. Well, now it's back on the table. And I'm not going to be the only one, let alone around the world, et cetera. So you're going to see that play out. Look for some of those travel stocks, potentially. I mean, Disney, we also have Uber. Now, you talk about a pullback, man. But again, check it out. 
right at the 618, folks, all right? Uh, big fan of Fibonacci's, big fan of our man Larry Pesavento. And he loves those fib numbers, learned a lot from watching him. And it is always nice when you see it right back to that 618, folks. The 618 on Uber, from the full COVID lows to the highs we got in early 2021, you're talking about a 618 of 3276. We traded down to 3281 last week within five pennies of a 618 retracement of that stock. You bounce a bit. We're up to $35. Doesn't mean they're out of the woods yet. Uber, a little bit more complicated stock than Disney in terms of their international exposure, Uber Eats, Uber, etc. But I think I made my case, folks. Keep your eye on all those stocks as we come out of uh, the Omicron variant and see how we go from there. <clears throat> okay. So let's jump over to interest rates, since that's what we're talking about, right? Then and now, how this Fed law liftoff is nothing like that of 2015. So I'm not going to go through the whole article, but I did want to touch on Bank of America. They're looking for seven, seven rate hikes this year. I don't see that one coming, folks. I think Chairman Powell, like I told you, he is dead focused on one of his mandates, and it's not maximum employment, folks. So he is going to be fierce in his declaration to keep moving forward with rising rates, but seven, I don't know if I see that. Um, acting too slow, yes, that's a real deal. Seven rates, not sure that's the case, but they're coming, folks. They're coming and they're starting in March and they're probably gonna be about four rate hooks this year. And don't expect that an economic number like we might see on the non-farm payroll number on Friday will freak that out. It's gonna take a continued continued dismal performance by the economy to put a dent in an economy that's running right now at unemployment of 3.9%. I know I'm saying somewhat of a repetitive issue, but it's important to remind yourself, folks, that it is gonna take a monumental shift change in the economic numbers taking place in this economy for Chairman Powell and the Federal Reserve to somehow think that they are impacting an economy to the point of weakness in their effort to maintain stable prices. This economy is as strong as you can be right now. Look at Apple's numbers last week, right? My goodness. Uh, this week, we get Amazon, we get Facebook, we get Google. Those three companies alone are expected to report almost one quarter of a trillion dollars of revenue over the last 90 days. You're talking about Meta, you're talking about Amazon, and you're talking about Google, Alphabet. Uh, big numbers in a big way, and we'll see where we go from there. Now, one thing I was looking at this morning as well, pretty interesting, Bloomberg had an article up here talking about speculative net long S&P 500 positions rise to the most since October of 2018. Check that out. Now, uh, during the beginning of the pandemic, you had some severe negative action in there, uh, probably some hedges getting some negative action on the S&P to offer set some exposure within portfolios. You see the negative action you had for the better part of the first half of 2020, that turns around. You see the ramp up that we've had, and then you see the ramp up on the pullback. Quite a ramp up indeed. Highest number since back to 2018. Interesting to see how that plays out in terms of where we go from there. All right. With that in mind, let's jump around to some of the headlines I have up here. Where do we start? Let's see. Talking about traders, talking about Spotify. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is what, what I was talking about uh, with the jobs number. White House warns that January's Omicron spike could weigh on the next week's jobs data. Not good when you see the White House coming out. Charity already underplayed the jobs data coming out on Friday. But I told you, I'm living it, folks. Okay, uh, let's just say TFNN had plans to hire somebody last week. That probably might have been put on hold. I don't know, but I'm just telling you, small businesses, large businesses, when you have this many cases going on, okay, whether you have spouses at home, you have kids, you have to isolate, people are out of work, there is going to be a disruption. There's no doubt about it. That disruption is already priced in with an expectation of only 150,000 jobs added. But when you start seeing the expectations downplayed already a week ahead, uh, we'll see how that go. Now, a recent report showed that more than 14 million Americans did not work at some point between December 29th and, Dece and January 10th due to COVID-19 related impacts. Folks, it's three weeks later than that, and this spike is just waning. There's a lot of Americans that were out of work to deal with the woes of COVID, whether it's families, whether it's yourself isolating, et cetera. That will play into things when we get Friday's number. And it'll be interesting to see if we get a big miss. Um, this one, I could argue, is transitory. It's really going to be interesting when we get over this hump, okay, in a month or two, when Omicron subsides, 
hopefully, but this is all the indications um, that we've already peaked out, at least nationally, all right? I know that some areas, I'm sure, are peaking still across the country and the globe, but within the U.S., hopefully we have peaked out. Sad deal, the number of deaths going on still, 2,400 people a day, man. You almost can't even comprehend um, the carnage. Very sad deal. But we are over that peak, and so in a month or two, there's not going to be any more excuses, okay? Hopefully there's no more variants, et cetera, but there is a legitimate excuse, I believe, in this non-farm payroll number. So don't anticipate too much of a rapid reaction to that number on Friday if it's a big miss. Because markets are already aware. That's not going to give the Fed any pause. That might not be a true reflection of the economy. We're going to get some earnings numbers this week. Those might be a much bigger number to watch. Facebook, Amazon, and Google. We'll go over some of those. We'll look at when they're coming out this week. We'll be right back from the market open, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&Ps negative by eight to kick things off. NASDAQ futures. NASDAQ 100 in the green by 63 points. Dow off 175. Let's jump over to the VIX right now. You got the volatility index 2842. Quite a spike last Monday to 3894. Now, checking out the VIX. All right, you put this thing on a weekly. We saw a spike at the COVID lows of 8547. You back it up just after that, though. The 
highest spike after the COVID lows, all right? Just because that skews the chart a little bit when you put 85 in there, you can't see how high these jump, jumps are when you're in the 40s. So we're gonna zoom in on the recent action. I say recent, going all the way back almost two years ago to June of 2020, almost a year and a half. Point being, you see that we are right at a level that usually indicates a, a spike. I mean, you're at the highest level you saw last week in the VIX since October of 2020. We saw a higher number last week than we saw of all of 2021. Maybe we get a pullback. Nothing certain, folks. But that is an area when you approach 40 that recently we've seen spikes. You're talking about 44, 38, 41, 37, 35. Um, and beyond that, you got as high as about 31.90 to 28s in the last year. So if you're looking for... Uh, a pullback in volatility premium, maybe a little bit of pause in terms of the negative pullback, that might be a good indication. Now, you jump over to the S&Ps, I'm gonna put this thing on a daily and zoom in on the action that we had last week. Boy, quite the volume day on Monday and quite the day indeed. These S&Ps, man, I mean, these bars, all right, you almost can't overstate. Folks, you're talking about a bar in the S&P last Monday, 215 points, 215 points and you finish the session in the green last Monday. And point being, you had volume at those lows. You're talking about 3.7 million uh, shares traded for the ES futures on Monday. And you can see it wanes a bit. You jump over to the Qs, pretty similar action across the board. And we're seeing all the markets slip into the negative right now. NASDAQ in the negative, Dow off 225 right now. There's your action in the Qs. <coughs> Excuse me. As we saw about 199 million shares traded on Monday, then it goes to 124, 146, 95, and only 108 on Friday. I mean, think about the action we had on Friday, and you almost did double the volume on Monday that you did on Friday. Maybe that's a little bit of an exhaustion. I mean, folks, anytime you just trade from 400 and change to 340, you're talking about a 15% pullback in the span of a month. That is a lot of selling right now in this market. Maybe we get a little bit of a pause. We will see as we go forward. All right, this headline. So think about, uh, I've talked about this a little bit. So China has been pushing the zero COVID policy. And it probably is gonna come back to bite them in the butt. Uh, disruptions in China can lead to ripple effects across the global supply chain, says HSBC. The pandemic has revealed how lean the supply chain has become and little margin of error. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. China's zero COVID restrictions will impact global supply chain recovery as any small disruption in the country will likely lead to ripple effects across the world. I agree with this, folks. I was talking about it last week. All right. The zero COVID restrictions of China do not work anymore with Omicron. So what you're seeing happening is they have very little natural immunity. Their vaccines are not as effective as the mRNA vaccines in the U.S. So they have a real problem that they have cases rising they can't control and they are willing to lock that down. OK, because if they don't, they have so little natural immunity that they may be overrun. So they're willing to lock down cities because they almost have to. And that's going to impact potentially supply chain. I mean, we're going to be out of it in the U.S. Hopefully Europe is, too. But China is a different deal because of the policies they've taken and they are still supplying the world with a lot of goods that make it through the corporate supply chain. That is going to be a constant theme, folks, until China actually overcomes uh, COVID and the zero COVID restriction policy that they've put in place will hamper uh, supply chain issues for months, if not years to come. So we'll see how that plays out. But that one is one I agreed with. I've been talking about. Keep your eye on that one for sure. All right. We got to talk a little bit about the NFL, man. Uh, quite a Super Bowl. Cincinnati versus the L.A. Rams. Uh, since he, boy, uh, quite a weekend of football. I said to some of my friends, so uh, you had four teams left coming in to this week, uh, right? You had Cincy playing Kansas City, and you had San Francisco playing the LA Rams. Now, last weekend, if you recall, we had eight teams left. You got four games last weekend, okay? Of the four games last weekend, the first three were all settled on a last second field goal. And the fourth game was the Kansas City game, Buffalo game, that was just extraordinary into overtime. So those are the four games last week. Then you get the Cincinnati game that ends in overtime. So that's the fifth straight game that you ended basically on the last play. 
And then you get last night's game with San Francisco versus L.A. Six straight games basically going down to the last second leading up to the Super Bowl. Did you hear that? Six straight games leading up to the last second leading up to the Super Bowl. Quite an NFL playoffs. Looking forward to that game in two weeks. <coughs> and a uh, couple of great teams. And, man, Joe Burrow, right? Uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Stafford and the Rams as well. But Burrow, man, on KC, quite a game indeed. And and here's what I'll say about it. If you didn't see the game uh, versus Cincinnati and Kansas City, okay, as people who are in the probability business, okay, small decisions, folks, can somehow, sometimes, not somehow, can sometimes have monumental impacts. And if you saw the end of the first half, you already know what I'm going to say. Kansas City had the ball up 21 to 10. They were on the one-yard line, <coughs> excuse me, and they had nine seconds left with first and goal. Tony Romo is in the announcing booth, and he does a phenomenal job, man. Watching those two games back-to-back, and Tori Aikman does a great job as the color commentator as well. But Tony Romo, I just really think he does an outstanding job. Even, you know, watching the first game, then the second, I found myself missing some of his takes. Um, but he had said, listen, you got nine seconds here, okay? You can do three plays. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. And he was right. The first play, you had Mahomes throw it away within uh, a few seconds when the pass wasn't open. So now they're down to five seconds left, and they're on the one-yard line, and they have no timeouts, okay? The play there is... You probably throw it somewhere in the end zone. That way, if there's an incomplete, it stops. And if it's a touchdown, you get the touchdown. Okay, and then you make the decision whether you want to kick a field goal uh, on the next play from the one-yard line or you just want to go for it for the touchdown. And maybe that's when you do a one-yard dive or something like that. What do they do, folks? They threw a little dump pass to the side, and Tyreek Hill got tackled in bounds, and the half ended. That was a monumental error by the coaching staff. Okay, Andy Reid. No excuses. And it started the demise of that game for Kansas City. Going into the half, that demoralized off of that decision uh, changed the whole complexity of that game. And yes, you know, you could say that maybe they kick a field goal. They're only up 24 to 10 versus 21 to 10. But it's a game changer, folks. They missed a huge opportunity there. And they did it uh, for no reason other than carelessness. And as a result of that, I think they're a little cocky. That's kind of what I'm getting here. I think if you were an underdog team there and you needed every point you could get, you would have made sure that you were making the absolute best decisions possible and you never would have thrown uh, a pass to the side and allowed it, but they weren't. They thought they were better than Cincinnati. They thought that they could kind of get a little, get a little tricky, get a little finesse, and throw a little dump pass to Tyree Kill. Maybe he'll cut it back inside and score. And no, no, what happened? He gets tackled, half ends, Cincinnati comes out, and they blow him away in the second half. So be aware of those small decisions, folks. Don't let down your guard like Kansas City did. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Just like that, market's finding yet another bid. You got the S&Ps in positive territory by three points right now at 44.27. NASDAQ surging higher. Right now, you're up 140 points. We'll call it 1% in the positive for the NASDAQ 100, trading at 14,570. I mean, putting this on a one-minute chart just to show you the acceleration. We dropped lower right out of the gate, and then boom. You're talking about 150 points, folks, from where we were trading at in 10 minutes. The NASDAQ 100 just accelerated 1% higher in the last 10 minutes. Volatility ain't going anywhere, folks, and it's not just going to be one way. We got a two way market right now in spades, as they would say. SPs, you're talking about a jump of about 25 points from where we were 10 minutes ago, and the Dow's still in negative territory about, about, by about 130 points. Let's jump around to some of the stocks that have earnings this week. Amazon getting some bid action up 2% to kick things off right now. Now, Amazon, let me get my uh, site straight in terms of where we are. Amazon is out Thursday after the market. Okay, let's jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about a $130 move priced into their numbers. We'll take a look at the weekly. You're talking about a $170 move priced into the numbers in terms of the volatility they might have if you want exposure through Friday. We get, uh, which which kicks it off? Let's see here. Give me one second, excuse me. Yeah, I believe we get. Let's see, let's jump around because we do get Amazon. I believe we get Facebook coming out with their numbers. February 2nd, what day is that? Wednesday after the bell. They're looking for a $17 move, just over a 5% move. Okay, Google is after the market tomorrow. That's what I was looking at. Is that right? Yes, it sure is. Okay, so Tuesday, I want to get them straight. Tuesday, we get Alphabet after the bell. Wednesday, we get Facebook. Thursday, we get Amazon. There we go. We got it. Uh, and as I mentioned, between the three of them, you're talking about $243 billion to be exact, I think. 243 point something, all three of them. Revenue in 90 days. Uh, among other companies you got in there, we got UPS out tomorrow before the opening bell. It's a big week of earnings. We get AMD tomorrow after the closing bell. Uh, Starbucks, PayPal, EA Sport, uh, excuse me, Electronic Arts, Gilead out tomorrow as well. Jumping around to some of the other companies reporting this week. Yeah, Amazon, Snapchat out Thursday as well. Pinterest, uh, GoPro. You get Win Resorts on Friday, Regeneron. Um, so it's going to be a big week, but those are the three headlines, Google, Facebook, and Amazon. And we jump over, you got Google shares actually trading lower on the open. Interesting divergence there with the NASDAQ 100 up 133 points. You got Google in the negative on the open. You got Amazon shares up more than 2% right now. And you got Facebook shares basically flat at 301.87. Let's jump around to some of last week's stocks. You got Apple 
trading up 1% at 172 right now. We had Tesla uh, with their numbers last week as well, catching a bid. How about that? Up 5.2% right now for Tesla shares at 890. All right, jumping back to the article. Here we go. It was talking about uh, then and now how this Fed liftoff is nothing like 2015. A couple charts uh, or graphics, I should say, I wanted to pull up here. We're all aware of this stuff, but when you take a look at it, you have to realize how much different this time is than any other time in recent history, folks. The Fed has never had to lift off when facing 7% inflation in my lifetime as an adult. Okay, you see the numbers in terms of 2015 versus 2021. Um, you know, the statement here, you're talking about, who do we have here? Uh, head of monetary policy research at Moody's, Ryan Sweet. The last time we were lifting off, the Fed was raising rates in anticipation that inflation was going to get back to 2%. Now they're raising rates in an environment where they're trying trying to get inflation down to their target of 2%. You see the CPI numbers across the board, well above anything that resembled where we were in 2015, but then this is pretty interesting, right? This is the prior tightening cycle, okay? You have the Fed funds rate in black, the upper boundary, you see where things got pulled back, then COVID hits and they really drop it. But look at where we were in terms of changes in, cons in the CPI. Look at where we are now. If you think that Chairman Powell is going to be worried about one jobs report during an Omicron spike when this is what's going on with the stability of prices, then you do not agree with my assessment of things. Uh, pay attention to that, folks. Keep it in mind when you start thinking that the Fed may pause or the Fed may be afraid to raise rates. Remember what Chairman Powell said and how confident he is that this is not the same as the last time. It's all there, folks, all right? You're going to take a severe weakening of this economy to pause the Fed. Doesn't mean the Fed's coming with seven hikes, okay? But they are not going to be worried if they cause a little bit of angst. I mean, there were analysts out there talking about that even another pullback of 15 to 20 percent would be what it took before the Fed really started to get worried. Because guess what? A 10 to 15 percent pullback from where we are right now? That would be unfortunate, okay? Inflation continuing to run to seven, even hotter, six, seven percent, that would be much worse than unfortunate. And that is what the Fed is dealing with right now. Um, yeah, hottest in nearly 40 years. I turned 42 in March. Haven't seen it in my lifetime, folks. So it's very difficult to assess it. But you see charts like that. We are in uncharted territory, to say the least. Uh, they need to get a handle on that, folks. That is increasing inflation, not transitory. That is increasing inflation for the entire portion of 2021. And that is probably what has Chairman Powell freaked out the most right now, and rightfully so. All right, let's jump over to some crypto. Bitcoin. Quite the acceleration last week, down to 32,000. You almost make it up to 39,000 on Wednesday. You're sitting right now, making it $470 at 37,320. So FTX, boy, FTX. Uh, how about a, was it $40 billion valuation? Let me pull this up. What did they just get? 40 billion? 32 billion, excuse me, 32 billion. Uh, you add their US affiliate though, and you're at 40. Check this out. So $32 billion valuation, despite bear market fears, credit, to them, you raise money when you can, folks. Uh, $400 million in a new round of funding, values the company at $32 billion, up from $25 billion just in October. It's just January, man. Uh, as they say, built up a war chest of funds at a time when crypto, price, crypto prices have sunk dramatically. That's $32 billion. Now, the company doesn't offer trading in the U.S. That function is provided by FTX U.S., its sister's, sister exchange, they just raised $400 million last week, valuing that company, though, at $8 billion. Uh, all investors in the U.S. affiliate jumped aboard its own fundraise as well. Having now raised a combined $2 billion in venture funding to date, built up the war chest uh, when digital currency prices have sunk considerably. Crypto ain't going anywhere. And... Uh, it's got to be nice to be the exchange, right? Yes, you're making a lot more money when crypto is going crazy, but they're going to be around. Crypto exchanges are going to be around. FTX, one of the biggest ones out there. And uh, $32 billion, $40 billion says a lot about the uh, investor need, want for access to that market. $400 million bucks um, from some of the smartest Wall Street firms out there. I mean, you're talking about, let me pull that up. You had... Uh, SoftBank's Vision Fund 2 and Tiger Global. Those two alone, some of the biggest uh, 
players out there in the business. So they're, they're, they're no fools putting that money in at that valuation. All right, folks, we got the S&Ps negative by two. We got the NASDAQ 100 up by 93. Stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got to try to Netflix up here. You talk about a pullback, man, getting cut in half in the span of, what are we talking about? Two months, we'll call it. Ah, a little bit more than two months, but from $700 right down to $350, cut in half. And boy, when you talk about a company that not many people thought you could pull back 50%, especially in two months, you start talking about companies on margin. Some of this may have been forced selling when you got down to an area that was pretty dicey there. They come out with their earnings a couple weeks ago, miss in a big way. You trade lower, but you're up 7.9%. That's a weekly. Let's put it back on a daily real quick. There's your pop up 7.9%. Now they get an upgrade by City today. I think City puts a 450 price tag on them. Just talking about too much negative selling. Uh, pricing power potential. For Netflix, nonetheless, trading higher. Disney shares trading higher as well, up about 1.1% today. Uh, Uber shares right now trading up 3.2%. Uh, volatility across the board, folks, in spades. You're seeing these markets trade higher. S&P is now up by 9 
back on a five minute chart, basically making session highs as we speak right now with the S&Ps up a quarter percent. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 1.25 percent. Let's jump around to some of those fang stocks as we finish it up. Amazon up 1.7 percent right now. You get Apple shares up one percent. Microsoft shares up six tenths percent right now. Google shares ahead of their earnings this week up about a tenth percent. Meta shares up about six tenths percent. It's going to be an interesting one, folks. That is to say the least with markets in positive territory to start things off. Gold contract catching a bit as well, up about 10 bucks, but giving back some of the gains. We were just above 1800 at about 930 to kick things off, backing off a bit right now. And let's jump over to the VIX as this market accelerates. We got a VIX giving it up to 2765. The low last week was just under 27. So approaching that level uh, as we got a little bit of strength in this market to kick off the trading, final trading day of January. And quite a January it has been, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in and starting your trading week off with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. And folks, if you have not subscribed to the opening call yet, it's a great time to do it. Basil, he's got a new update out Monday for subscribers, but he put out a special video on Saturday for subscribers. You can gain access if you sign up for the opening call. All of our subscriptions come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Basil's up next. And of course, we got uh, Larry Pesamento at 11, Fast Market at 12, Steve Rhodes back live at 1 o'clock, Dave White at 2, Tom O'Brien back live from 3 till 4. Have a great Monday, everybody.